it's Rob Bryanton and uh, today's video blog entry is dated September 17th, 2008. It's called Crossed Wires in the Brain and Jason has come up with a little visualization for us here uh, indicating those beautiful flowering connections that happen within people's minds. If you'd like to read along go to 10thdimension.com slash blog. Uh, Today's video blog entry uh, actually was based upon a New Scientist article that happened uh, around the time that the blog went out on synesthesia. If you're reading along in the blog, you can click to read that article right now. This is one of the things I've talked about here from other perspectives. Each of us has our own unique grid of awareness, a way of observing that makes each of us who we are. In my book, I talked about the difficulties this causes for science fiction stories of mind melds and personality transplants. And I'm quoting from the book now. Marvin Minsky's Society of Mind shows how many small processes can be linked together in hierarchies and feedback loops to create what we think of as the mind. These processes start in the womb and become increasingly multi-layered and intricate as we approach adulthood. But there are many, many ways to achieve that network of mental processes that becomes a functioning individual. A common fallacy, then, is to presume that everyone sees and hears the same way you do. The fact is, each person has different ways of processing the data that is entering through their senses. What would it be like to drop into the mind of the dinosaurs we saw in the film Jurassic Park, who, as explained in the movie, could only see things that are moving? The science fiction idea of dropping into someone else's mind or trying to download someone else's memories ideas explored by a number of times in the writing of Philip K. Dick, could be just as alien as trying to enter the mind of a dinosaur. For instance, some humans have a great deal more difficulty processing foreground sounds if there are too many simultaneous background sounds. Others will focus to the point where they may not even be aware that other sound sources or echoes of the foreground sounds from surrounding reflective surfaces are there and some people experience a condition called synesthesia, where their senses are mixed in surprising ways. They taste textures or they see sounds, for instance. Okay, also in my book I talked about the marvelous uh, Oliver Sacks book, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for His Hat, which chronicles various examples that show us just how strange and complex the process of consciousness and mind can be. Recently in my blog entry, David J. Brown and Psychedelics, we talked a bit about the idea that hallucinogens might also be able to, or to reveal information about how our consciousness and the underlying patterns of reality are interrelated. And in blog entries like Magnets and Souls and Daily Parrying, I've talked about Dr. Jill Bolt Taylor's book, My Stroke of Insight which reveals some fascinating truths about how our interface with reality is so strongly mediated by separate and distinctly different patterns or grids of awareness that coexist within what we've traditionally called the mind. Now, if you're reading along in the blog, I'd like you to click, or click on a link now to a story from the UK's Daily Mail, uh, which came out a few weeks uh, before. It's about some other exotic examples of crossed wires in the brain. Persons mentioned in the article include Richard Murray of Birmingham, England, who three years ago suffered a stroke, had to relearn how to speak, but mysteriously now finds that he speaks with a French accent. James Wannerton, a synesthete who can taste words. And Tommy McHugh, a builder who suffered a massive brain hemorrhage in 2001 and suddenly became a prodigious artist. Okay, so let's go back to where we started now and talk about synesthesia again. Uh, there's an animation that Jason's putting up for us. This comes from a Caltech page about uh, synesthesia. And if you are watching uh, uh, right now, we're just showing the animation over and over. If you go to the Caltech page, you can just click on it yourself and watch it. And you'll see uh, this animation, which if some people are watching it, they'll hear a sound. Obviously, this test is best done in a quiet environment, free from other distractions. For that small percentage of the population who actually have some forms of synesthesia, the effect should be immediate and obvious. For others like myself, they might be able to convince themselves that they hear a faint hissing sound associated with the motion after repeated viewings, but this is where the line between imagination and perception can become very tricky. In the New Scientist article we talked about, it suggested that synesthetes who hear sounds associated with visual input 
might even have a certain advantage because of their blending of the senses. The article report, reports that most of us are better at remembering sound patterns than visual patterns. In a test that compared persons known to have sound visual synesthesia within a control group, or with a control group, everyone was about 85% accurate on the sound trials. With visual patterns, however, the control group remembered only 55% of the visual patterns correctly, while synesthetes remained steady at 85%. Clearly, people who can hear visual patterns can actually be helped by their unusual ability in certain situations. In items like music and the dance of creativity, the geometry of music, and information equals reality, I've tried to tie all these ideas into what the power of music reveals about how our brains are so finely tuned to memes that connect across time and space. Crossed wires in the brain give us another way for thinking about the patterns that create our reality and how important our participation as quantum observers is in that process. To finish today's video blog, one of the 26 songs about that project, or about, I'll start over on that. To finish today's video blog, Here's one of the 26 songs attached to this project. And this one is just a simple recording of me sitting at my old piano at home, singing a song about our role as conscious observers, choosing from the bush-like branching structure of possible futures. The song is called Hang a Left at the Lights. My name is Rob Bryanson from the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Enjoy the journey. Think about where you're going Maybe it's time to hang and let the delights Choose another way Maybe it's time to put on the brakes Cause sometimes it's okay To hang and let the delights Are you writing big fat checks That your body just can't cash Burn your candle at both ends Well, it's never gonna last Are you sipping on the top? Are you dragging in the dirt? Are you headed for a fall? Are you headed for some hurt? Maybe it's time to hang a left at the lights Choose another way Maybe it's time to put on the brakes Sometimes it's okay to hang a lift at the lights Get that road map where the hell's that star saying you are here Give me some directions This time try to make them clear for another lap But this time will be different If things start to turn to crap I'll be saying maybe it's time to hang a left with the lights and choose another way Maybe it's time to put on the brakes Cause sometimes it's okay to hang a left at the lights To hang a left at the lights To hang a left at the lights